Okay, so this is Windows Project Neon 2.0 and uh, it's version 0.2.8. It's a beta build that uh, Amir sent me from the Discord. And uh, this has got a custom UEFI boot, uh, which is created by Marsan. And uh, I'm using it from a micro SD card. I've got my USB to Ethernet adapter plugged in, and I've also got my USB sound card plugged in as well. But also for this video, I thought I'd try something a little different, and I've got a DVD drive plugged in. I wanted to play around with DVDs on Windows because I didn't have a lot of success on Linux. So this custom firmware has uh, overclocking beyond 2 gigahertz, uh, the new Altera, Altera logo that you just saw, uh, instant boot up, pre-disabled 3 gig limit as well. Uh, but you can find out more information on the Discord. So it's booting up now, so I'm just going to switch over to screen capture. Okay, so let's go into the Edge browser and uh, go to my channel and we'll do a search for DVD and Pi and see what that comes up with because I did a few videos before. Yeah, so using Linux, I did... Uh, well, actually, I've used it also to dump some games on there, some original ROMs, uh, this same drive, but uh, to play and back up DVDs, and convert CDs to MP3. So I did all that within Linux. I think I probably did it in Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, but I couldn't get, so with DVD, I used a demo disc that I had from years ago, an old DTS demo disc. And uh, I ripped it and played it and everything was fine. I didn't realize that original disc, there is no DRM within Linux. You have to either buy it or somehow install it. And uh, I always remembered that with Windows, it, it used to be much easier. So I figured I'd try it with Windows. Uh, so I've got Spider-Man in my DVD player at the moment. I wonder what it shows like on here. I haven't used DVD for so long. Uh, there you go, so DVD drive. So if I right click on that, I wonder what happens with autoplay then. So I've installed uh, into video Win DVD 4, which I had from back in the day, it was on my server. Uh, so it looks like it finds it on there. Uh, funny, it doesn't find VLC on there, but VLC uh, has the D on Windows has the DRM to be able to play DVDs. So I'm not going to use Win DVD because I didn't find it to be that good. Uh, I am going to use DVD Shrink in a minute just to show you that that still works. But both of these installed absolutely perfectly just from the old files that I had on my NAS drive. So files I used years ago. Uh, and also I've got TD Author as well, which uh, I'll explain about in a minute. So let's open up VLC. And uh, this is already installed in this build of Windows, and, and it actually works perfectly well with DVDs. Here we go. So if I go to Media and open Disk, so DVD Spider-Man comes up. I think I just hit Play. As I say, I used to do this a lot, but I, I very, very rarely do this now. And here we go. And you can see it's playing. If I turn on my speaker, so my USB sound card is working fine. Let's just pause that. Okay, so you can see I've got the menu here. Uh, so things like scene selections. I think that works with mouse. Or does that? Oh, it works with cursors. So I can use my cursor keys, hit enter, and then that will show me all the titles. And I can skip through with just the cursors. So if I wanted a particular one, so if I go, oh there you go, 15 selected there, let hit enter. Yeah, so all that works fine. Um, but I thought it was more interesting that I also got to work uh, DVD shrink. So if I, and I used to use this back in the day. Um, so I worked, I sold TVs in the 90s and uh, so DVDs were very popular back then and uh, it was the best thing we had for demos. And so what I used to do was uh, pick DVDs that had really good quality content in them and uh, I used to rip the content but then just take out particular chapters that I thought were suitable for demo. So, uh, you know, things with people's faces in, uh, nice close-ups, nice and bright, also stuff that you could show in a shop. Uh, and so I used to create discs uh, based on various different chapters because you play something like that Spider-Man movie, loads of it's dark, some of it's not not uh, suitable if there's kids walking in and out of a store. Okay, so here you can see the disc uh, and we can click on things like main movie, you can see the main title in there, uh, you can play it from there, you can see any extras that are on there. Extras might be handy for this because they'll be a lot shorter uh, and so it doesn't take ages for it to rip because it does take quite a while to rip it. So look here, Spider, Handler, there we go, so yeah, let's try that bit. So if you go to reauthor, 
you can actually pick whichever bit you want to put in. So if we click on one of these files, uh, again, let's, let's try that one. I think you can drag it up. Yeah, so here we've got only 65 megabytes, one minute and 47. Uh, and so if I hit play, it will show me what it is, wrestler. Uh, so if I hit back up, that will then save it to this folder. Uh, let's change that to something else. Let's just call it Spider-Man 222. Hit OK. And you can see that's ripping and it's showing you it's ripping at the same time. And it's a lot quicker than it used to rip for me years ago uh, because it's, it's obviously a more powerful device even though it's running from an ARM processor. So once that's done, that will be a folder on the C drive. Uh, there we go. So that's finished. So I can now I can close that down because I, I, if you want to know more about DVD Shrink and also used to use DVD Decryptor, you can look that up. Um, and they it looks like they work on uh, you know absolutely fine on Windows uh, 10 on Raspberry Pi. So if I go into the video folder, uh, so one of these will be the video file. Will be that one. And I need to open that with VLC. Yeah, it doesn't come up in that menu, so I'm better off to go to the Windows symbol, click on VLC, and then open up the file uh, so I can navigate to that. There's obviously other ways of doing this, but I'm, I'm a bit rusty because I don't really do it very much anymore. Right, so hit open. But I just thought it was interesting to share. So you can see it works absolutely fine. So if you are looking at uh, ripping video content from disk and having it on your Pi maybe to take on holiday or to have in a, in a different room or something like that and then you can store your DVD somewhere else, then it's a way of doing it. Uh, it also works with iTunes with audio disks so you can rip MP3s onto here. Uh, you can use Audacity uh, to be able to edit as well. So there's all sorts of things you can do. Uh, but I thought I'd also try games, and I'll just switch to camera. Okay, so I've got some of my games in from my loft. Uh, so the Spider-Man disc was the one I was ripping. Uh, there's Insane, which I thought I'd give a try, because uh, I've just played that recently on a PSP mini game. Uh, it was definitely a, a copy of this game. Well, I think it was, anyway. Uh, so I've got GTA Original. Uh, I've got Rebel Assault, Command & Conquer Red Alert, Privateer 2 and uh, Motocross Madness, but I'm going to try Insane and uh, pop it in the DVD drive and see if this boots. It's also got another disc in there which has got manuals, demos and promos, so I wonder what's on there. I might try that first. Let's pop that in. Okay, so let's have a look. Click on the folders, DVD drive, right click on that. Open autoplay, let's try that. Run bests.exe. Quite noisy. It's a noisy drive. <laughs> QuickTime 3 or later not Oh, it wants to install QuickTime 4. Although it was doing something, wasn't it? So if I do Windows D, uh, let's have a look. This version of Windows does, does run well on the Pi. After installing QuickTime, press logo to quit and then restart CD. Uh, let's just do as it says, I guess. This just shows how uh, this just shows how 32-bit stuff does does tend to run on the Pi 4, uh, and obviously it's emulated, but it does seem to work. Oh look, QuickTime will choose. I've got <laughs> it shows what modem I've got. Well, yeah, 28. I did have a 33.6 modem. That was my first modem. It's nice and quick. Hopefully it doesn't need a restart. Right. Yes, I want to view the readme file now. Yes, I want to view sample. Yeah, I want to view the sample movie. Is that, is that the sample movie? Or is this going to be the sample movie? This might be it. <laughs> Got some strange audio there. Right, okay. So, let's quit out of that. After installing QuickTime, press logo to quit and then restart CD. What? Oh, looks like it's restarting. Got a nice lineup of old programs on this Windows 10 build. 
Right, it's doing something because I can hear the drive. I think I'm going to lose the web browser. So is it going to do that on its own? No, I probably have to. Let's go for autoplay again. Sounds alright on that, although no no image. I guess we'll skip the intro. Uh, oh, here we are. Let Kai McRae Rally 2. Toka 2. Oh, there you go. Promo video. So, does it say promo video there? Oh, I see. Oh, it looks like it doesn't seem to like the video in this quick time. Oh, no. We've got something there. So, I've got. Oh, I see, I've got the manual for this. I guess they put this in with all of these games, and you just you had a way of, of uh, seeing the manual for your for your particular game. If Acrobat is not installed, click me. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah, I guess I haven't got Acrobat. Right, let's leave that, and I'll put in the, the game disc and see if I can install it. So does Eject work fine? Sounds like it's going to. Yeah, so let's give you the audio. that in and you can hear that spin up there you go so it recognizes the CD doesn't seem to auto start anything but I don't think Windows 10 does in the same way that older versions of Windows used to do install or run program from your media let's do autoplay and see how it comes up run Install, right next, yes, select, and after all this it's probably not going to play well because a lot of the 3D games don't, don't run great, so typical installation, no, I'll go with just typical because I've got the DVD drive to be able to, to play from, next, seems to be right for speed, so again I'm running from an SD card, this build of Windows does work with uh, various different SSD drives, I did have it running on my NVMe drive, and then the adapter stopped working uh, and I've given the NVMe drive to my son and he's put it in his computer and transferred his operating system over to it and is working absolutely fine so that Pioneer NVMe drive is great so set up, we'll install the CMN client can I skip that? it looks like I can't skip that would you like to register online? I'm going to say no would you like to install DirectX 7? I'm going to say no, hopefully it will let me do it without doing that so let's not view the readme files and let's just launch insane. So everything's looking all right so far. Be great if this does work. So I've hit play. My CD doesn't seem to be doing anything. Oh, <laughs> launcher not responding. Okay, that's not a good sign. And I think it closed on its own then. So let's try and launch it from the icon. Click on that. Oh, so I've selected play online waiting for a response. Now this could be because this particular network probably doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, let's close that. Okay, I'll restart it and try it again, but it looks like... Oh, I can't get out of that. Control or delete. Control or delete worked fine. So I think I'll restart that and just give it a try because sometimes restarting. And also I can use the compatibility wizard actually. So let's restart first. Okay, so I've restarted. And this definitely restarts a lot quicker than previous Windows 10 builds. Uh, so if I right click on here and properties, compatibility, run this game. So this game, looking at the specs, Windows 95, not A. Windows 98 and ME and Windows 2000, so I guess the nearest to that is XP. Uh, so I'll go with XP. Yeah, let's leave that as it is and hit apply. I haven't really messed about with these Windows 10 ARM emulation settings before. That might be something that, that could be looked at. So hit play insane. No, it just quits out. Okay, I think we're going to leave it there. But uh, as you can see, certain things, uh, certainly I found uh, things like programs tend to run really well on this. 32-bit programs tend to be really well supported. If you look back through my playlist, I've tried loads and loads of things on Windows on Raspberry Pi. Um, so thanks to everybody in the Discord. Thanks for Marsan for creating that new UEFI. Thanks to Amir uh, for providing me with this image. And thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.